Good morning, good morning, kings, queens, gamers, people of royalty. How are we doing? The rule was I would be live at any time I could. So, therefore, we are up bright and early, basically at the crack of dawn for gamers. 10, 18 a.m. Oh, my goodness. Can you believe it? How could a human possibly wake up this early? Anyways, how are you guys doing today? What's up? What's up? Day four of official Pokemon Shiny Wars. This is just the perspective of one shunter, myself, Petrowski. There are tons of other shunters streaming their journey on Twitch right now. Definitely go check them out. See the journey live, see the ups and downs, see the hype, see the boring times. You know, shiny hunting in reality is a, a lot of boring times. Um, I just glitched my game. <laughs> well, that's kind of funny to start the stream. So I actually have to re-log. If this ever happens to you, um, it means the game thinks you're still stuck in the battle. I haven't seen this in a long time. It still thinks I'm stuck in the battle. So the best way to get out of it is to actually re-log really quick. Okay, we're back on the game. We're doing okay. Let's see how many egg boxes... I have left one, two, three, four, five. Not that many. I probably finish hatching today, I want to say. I might have to work on getting. I'll definitely have to start buying ditto boxes soon. If we have downtime today or a time where I want to take a break from shiny hunting, um, buying ditto boxes honestly might be the play to get into that today. That actually does remind me. Uh, do you have stacked shiny charms? No, I really don't have that many shiny charms. Only three. But I've been wanting to. I'm going to go ahead and spend. Where are they at? I'm going to go ahead and spend. I've, got, I've been sitting on 1,500 RP. I'll go ahead and spend 10 of it. One. You have to buy them individually? Wait, that's hilarious. Okay, well, if that's the case, I mean, maybe I just buy five for now. I, I sure? That's weird. I didn't know you had to buy them individually. I didn't, I didn't know you couldn't select like 10 at a time. I guess it's not that many clicks, but it's a little funny. Interesting. That's so interesting. I really don't know anything about Love Ball. Uh, apparently, I've heard good things, but I really don't know how the mechanic works too much. Chat was saying that um, if you use Love Balls against the same Evo line, so the same species of Pokemon with the opposite gender, it reaches an eight times catch rate. That's extremely high. So if you use them for alphas, for example, let's say there, you know, it's an alpha Dragonite. If you bring your own Dragonite to that fight, and let's say your Dragonite's male and the alpha's female, you get an eight times catch rate. That's pretty insane. Eight times is pretty ridiculous. It's easily the highest catch rate of any Pokeball, right? So there's an alpha male guard chop and I throw out my female, I have it eight times. Yeah, that's, that's, that's insane. Honestly, I probably should use this. More set up. Yeah, honestly, I probably should start using love balls. I've heard good things. I feel like, yeah, that's pretty nuts. A any way to get an eight times catch rate is just pretty ridiculous. Dude, I did not realize love balls were 5k. Can you, because you can only make them through apricorns, right? But I don't think you can buy these from cheaper, from any, from any Pokemon, correct? That's pretty wild, actually. No wonder they're not used as much. Pink apricorn and like 1200 yen. Mates, uh, how much can you buy the pink apricorns for? Wait, how do you get the... Oh, what are they? Oh, they're called, like, something else. Why is blue yellow? What? Blue apricorn? Why is it yellow? Hello? Yellow apricorn? Wait, are these bugged? Is this a glitch? Why is blue apricorn yellow and yellow apricorn blue? Huh? Is that old strings? I don't know. Is that on my end? That might be a strings issue, possibly, to be fair. How much are pink apricorns? Pink, okay, pink apricorns. Okay, so yeah, pink apricorns are just 3k. So the cheapest way would be like, you'd buy that and then spend... Damn, that's interesting. Maybe... Dude, I, now I kind of wonder... I wonder if apricorns are worth farming. That would be really... The idea of apricorn farming being a viable money-making method, even just for like super new players or like from scratch players in Johto, that's a really, really cool money-making method to exist. Like, that really does... It's it's because that money making method just hardcore m motivates and allows for like just like ear to the ground farming if that makes sense like that is the most like you know physically and literally where it's like you're farming from a tree um stuff like that is money making methods like that to exist are really good for new players it's actually a great question i've probably done around 120 catch events so i feel like i have pretty good experience on this any thoughts on what a good iv pokemon would look like for a catch event i've only participated in two and got a 141 and a 128 now there's a million different answers to this 
Now, your average catch for a catch event is probably going to be your average best catch is going to be like 120 to 145. It's not going to be like that crazy. You're like, it, it took me 100 or so catch events to win one, right? It did not, but then I won like two in a row, or not, not two in a row, but like two almost back to back, very close to each other. Um, generally, first place in a catch event. From my experience, I would say generally, and it depends on the species, it depends on the Pokemon. Like, if it's a Togepi only catching event, then the scores will be much lower. There's much less catches. But generally, at a catch event, first place is going to be somewhere around 172, I would say. 172 is like 170 to 172 is around first place. And then I would say second place is usually around 168 to 170. And then I would say third place is around 166 to 168. I think those like total score margins are about pretty average. And then for fourth place, you're generally looking at 16 to 20 total score. Once again, depending on different species bonuses, is there a minus in the event, etc., etc. It can depend on a lot of factors, but that's the general, the general numbers to look for for sure. If you catch anything over 160 definitely submit my, honestly my rule is if i catch anything over like 150 i still submit it there's not really any harm in submitting now generally if it's like below 150 i don't submit or even 155s i've not submitted in the past but that's kind of you, you don't want to be that you don't want to ever risk it where like oh everybody thinks like oh i'm not gonna win so i'm not gonna submit and then somebody with like a 149 wins like that's kind of hilarious i've seen it happen like once or twice um so you don't want to, you don't you don't want to be that guy where you're too lazy to just not submit, but you also don't need to submit like every single catch event like a 128 or some shit, you know. Um, but if you want to, you can. There's really no harm in it. It's literally the dev's job in that situation to to check everybody's Pokemon. So don't feel bad about submitting an entry. Do you think the devs will add extra locations from Black White 2? It should be a good addition, plus new places to shunt, plus EV training, etc. Yeah, I. People have been asked for Black White 2 for a long time. I don't really see, I've always said that I don't really see the value in adding a whole, like Black White 2. I feel like it's too much of a repetitive content. It would be similar to adding Kanto 2 in Johto, which we didn't do. Um, however, I think just adding the extra locations from Black White 2 to, like, I, I think that becomes really interesting. Um, I think that actually becomes hyper worth it, but adding a whole extra region just for the sake of a region becomes a little silly in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I, I think I think just extra locations. Why that? Why not? That sounds amazing to me. You know. Wait, this is really funny. I would do this. This guy said people who trust trade me get cool mons for one k. I want to go see because ninety nine point nine nine percent of the time, someone like this is scamming, right? And if I get scammed, I don't mind because I have Pokeyen. But like, if he scams me, it's the easiest. I could just report me. It's scamming's bannable. Uh, I'm gonna message him. Hey, where are? you at in game smiley face so it's a win-win i get scammed and he gets banned pog for scamming or um or he just has like a really funny little cute service we'll have to see let's see if he knows who i am and won't respond that would also be very very funny get scammed live on stream pog i kind of that's kind of now it's kind of funny now i kind of want to oh no he messaged me yo pat what the fuck god damn it he knows why i should have done it on an alt account um oh freak Oh man, never mind. Social experiment was ruined. Yeah, I'm done to shalpha check. I think I think it actually probably is worth to shalpha check pretty much every alpha. I don't usually do that um, outside of wars, but there's a alpha bayonet over in Sinnoh. I don't know how difficult it's going to be to get to. Let's go try. All right, here it is, fellas. The alpha bayonet. Uh, it's not shiny. Rip. It's actually a great question. Hey, back. Quick question: Which upcoming seasonal event is the best to pump Pokeon into? I'm getting cash in for Halloween, but don't know whether to wait for Lunar or Christmas. The honest answer is, it just depends on the event, right? So, like, it depends on the vanities released. It depends on the difficulty of the boss fight. Like, understanding what yen and which win to hold, and like. It's actually one of the most difficult decisions in Pokemo is understanding what makes a good event versus a bad one, and also what makes a good investment versus a bad one. Uh, what are some good examples of this? A good invest, a good example of this would be something like the um, the White Rabbit plush, right? Um, the White Rabbit plush. Oh my God, it's 50 mil. It was 30 something mil last I checked. Holy shit. The White Rabbit plush was an insane investment for a couple of reasons. Number one, a lot of people didn't play this event because they were already burnt. This was the Lunar New Year, right? In 2023. A lot of people didn't play this event because they were burnt out from the Halloween, the Christmas event, number one. And then number two, um, 
not many people did this actual activity or open these sealed products because this was the first year i believe that shaman came out so people really wanted to go for shaman so people were busy doing the like 16 hour shaman grind so they didn't actually farm the um what's it called the abundant shrine dungeon as much so like every single event has a different story and every single event has different circumstances which dictate you know what vanities are good investments what event is a good event it's really really complicated and there's never going to be one easy answer of like oh yeah of course always christmas every year like no no no. it just it depends on the vanities being released it depends on the circumstances around it it depends on the other updates um markets are just really complicated and this is a perfect example of that that was a great question though because i think it's a really cool thing to worth worth talking about gotcha thanks is my first event season looking forward to it event season is amazing um it's so fun i was actually about to say your first event season is probably like the most fun but i actually don't think so your first event season is very fun and it's very interesting but but it's fun and interesting because you're learning everything for the first time and therefore your first event season will almost always be your worst investments because you have so much to learn and you don't really you know you have to get more familiar right I think your second event season is probably your best because you make the best investments and you have the education and you know what to look for this time and you have the experience. It's really interesting how much like that matters. Um, but yeah, I think your second event season is probably your favorite and then your first season is like the most exciting and interesting and you have so much to learn and it's overwhelming. Event seasons, regardless of how new or how many, no, no matter if you've had one event season or 10, um, they are all so overwhelming. Like generally, the high end like the best players in pokemo will play like 10 to 12 hours a day and even when doing that they won't get everything they want done during the event there's just so much to do it's ridiculous um so there'll be a lot of things you have to kind of it's good to at the start of an event make decisions early what you care about the most like okay i really care about doing pumpkin hard mode to farm the pumpkin goodie bags and maybe to get particle effects let me do that right versus like uh selling off or buying opening seal product or doing seal product or um maybe like some sort of like swarms or something like that right so like you have to really keep that in mind wait do i need to do regions for the events oh no 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 spidget oh no 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 uh for the holiday events in pokemo you only need one region complete to participate but the more regions you have done is aggressively better like you i really do recommend but in my opinion, I always say five regions, all regions done in Pokemo really is a baseline level for like intermediate, like mid-level play. Like I think you need all regions done to like, you just access all content, right? Um, to be able to access all things and to be able to, yeah, hopefully play the game at like an intermediate to, to end game level. Okay, we can actually recap all shinies that happened yesterday off stream. So these are all the shinies that I missed. I don't know how many, so I think yesterday we used, started the day at like what 37 shinies i could go through and recount but okay um shinies just gotten yesterday it's currently day four of official shiny wars um rare got a shiny sock nine tails got a shiny cottony xrd got a shiny spinda mitch got a shiny sock isn't juice got a cottony you kind of notice the uh, amount of repeat shinies are crazy because of all the um the point differences are like the certain spots are much better for points dad peaks got a shiny uh, cacnea tints got a shiny spinda tints got a shiny apom back to back jesus that's crazy um zephy got a shiny marowak Glo and glower got a shiny cacnea that's a lot that's for day four that's pretty nuts let me count in total how many shinies team mister has gotten so far 45 Team Mister has gotten, I don't know, individual teams. We have four teams within Shiny Wars itself, but Team Mister has gotten 45 Shinies within the first four days, and there's still seven hours left in day four. So it's we're well over 10 Shinies a day. Pat, can you speak about the Horde changes last year and how they have impacted the game to this day in your opinion? This is a great question. I remember when that change happened. It was about a month after Johto. For those who don't know, they took a bunch of Hordes mostly released with johto but some older hordes like the tynamo um joltic horde and they split them up based on their wild rarity so on johto's release larvitar the larvitar horde was 50 percent chance for shiny larvitar or for larvitar hordes and 50 percent chance for onyx which previously to that times five horde it was an egg hunt so it went from a it literally went from like a 2000 hour hunt to now a 45 hour hunts because you split the difference of two times five hordes or whatever right two times four horde chance of 50 percent or whatever um 
on average. That was crazy. And so they basically what they did was they kind of went back on it a month later, which put a really bad taste in the player's mouth. And I have a really, I have a scripted, very well spoken, much better video on this topic. I'm kind of just reciting this from over about a, this is like a year ago or so. So if you want an actually well presented argument for this, I would go watch that video. Um, that change, like even I, I hated that change at first. It took me about 24 hours of mental processing. Everybody hated it at first, but some of us came around, but not many. I remember making a video giving my arguments and actually saying how it was a good change to split it to they took the larva the 50 50 hunt and made it 20 80 so it was 80 percent chance for onyx 20 percent chance for larvitar now there's still some problems with that um for example getting four onyxes on the way to a larvitar doesn't feel good that's way too many duplicates and they talked about hopefully adding extra species in those spots in the future that would be awesome to break up that monotony and break up that amount of duplicates because that amount of duplicates is pretty crazy um but the positive of that change was it gave us rare shunts like Miltank, like Larvitar, and made them not common hunts, but still not turbo rare. Um, and it, it also, it added a whole extra layer of complexity and an extra tier of difficulty with shiny hunting. So you went from, okay, you have your times five horde lepa hunts, you have your times five horde, uh, non lepa hunts, you have your times five horde, 100% spawn rates, hundred uh, times five horde, um, 33, 33, 30, sp three spawns. You have your times five horde, um, what's it called your times five forward 50 50 splits and now you also have these this new tier of shunts that are 2080 and it basically made it so now we have times five horde shunts that some can take 30 hours at the lowest on average some could take um 45 hours some could take you know 60 to 80 and now we have a 150 hour times five horde hunt for, but for very very good shinies things like shiny larvitar and mill tank I think looking back, adding an extra tier of difficulty to shiny hunting for a very rare shiny, and I think it's very, very cool and works very well. The main problem is it put a really bad taste in players' mouth because players had access to the better method, essentially, for one month, and they took it away from us, and that made people really mad. Understandably so, um, but you've got to give people time to hopefully mentally process that and hopefully get over it. Also, yes, the, I actually this was the thing that actually made me the angriest or upset me the most, and I, once again, I was in favor of this update at the time, but there's still, and I still am, it's still, I think it's a great update, but there were so many problems that went about with it from the devs. The devs called it a bug fix in the change log. And that, to me, is the most insulting. It's almost like a, well, um, actually, it, it technically was a bug fix because the, they were, the hordes were supposed to be like that originally, but they weren't ever like that for, like, the eight years hordes had been in the game, or, like, the six years or whatever. It's kind of like, um, what's an analogy? Like, imagine if in, um, if in, like, League of Legends, Blitzcrank Q was like a hundred meter meters or like whatever the fuck like longer than it should have been for like years and all of a sudden they're like oh bug fix we'll take that away like whoa, whoa, whoa. like that's not a bug fix like that's a balancing change that's a massive deal um like e even if it was technically a bug it was still a massive 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 balancing change and calling that a bug fix in the patch notes was really uh, was like it really showed it was really out of touch in my opinion and kind of really fucked up but that was one of the biggest mistakes i've seen the devs make but overall i do think that was the the pokemon devs constantly do this thing of putting out a genius very good update that players are going to hate in the short term this has happened over and over and over again look at breeding consuming pokemon right when breeding got changed to consume pokemon people hated it like the game almost died from a mixture of people hating that update and the economy was so bad before the update but after getting used to it and after learning the system and understanding why it's so good pokemon being consumed when breeding is probably the best and most important and integral part to the Pokemon economy. And I would say that every single Pokemon MMO ever made after Pokemon probably needs to copy that exact system to succeed. It is like that insanely genius and that insanely good. Um, but it was hated on release. The devs are so unafraid, maybe too afraid or too unafraid to put out updates that the players will fucking despise in the short term but are actually good for the game. Um, and it's like, so they, they catch so much flack because of that, but it's actually, they do they do generally, genu generally put out really great updates. Things like expert lores that we wouldn't have ever thought about. Um, 
yeah, that's my little rant about that. Uh, hey Pat, I'm a new player still doing my first set of gyms. Is there anything I can gain from this event at this point from Shiny Wars? Unironically, in my opinion, yes. I think you actually can gain. So what I would do if I were a new player is I would abuse the certain money-making methods that are quite good right now during Shiny Wars. So things like Kitchen Rotoms, things like... Um, what are some other like expensive species? Any of the starters or anything that's gotten really expensive. Um, going after Fino Pokemon, so like Audinos. If you have Unova done, like it depends. It depends what regions you have access to as a new player. Um, what are what are Rotoms at right now? Rotoms are around 10k a piece base. I, so catching Rotoms, 10k a piece a piece base price, and then 20k a piece for a one times 31 in pretty much every single stat. If you happen to get a two times Thunder Road with 55k, you could also learn breeding, but that's a little I wouldn't expect a new player to want to want to learn or have to learn breeding. Um Ditto catching is solid. Um fossil farming as a new player, if you just have one region done, is really, really good. You can get into lep yeah, berry farming if you enjoy that. Like right now, as a new player, there's tons of ways to um abuse certain money making methods to to get your way into the game. Do you guys want to know something gross? This spot, I don't know how this is possible, but this spot, Route 114 at daytime in Hoenn, is supposed to be, on average, 1.68 points per 10 hours. 1.68 points per 10 hours. Um, I've been here for quite a few hours, and I've gotten zero points. Can you believe that, guys? Shake my head. Do 10 fossils, your shiny is in them. You know what, dude? I'm so out of content. <laughs> I'm not even on my own charm. I'm so out of content. Let's go pop 10 fossils. Sure, why not? Okay, everybody spam, give me shiny, give me shiny. That's how you get all the RNG, okay? Look at this guy doing it. Say, give me shiny, give me shiny, okay? And this will work 100% guaranteed, okay? We're only doing 10, okay? We can do five per inventory. Custom strings make fossil popping ridiculously faster. All right, here it is, fellas. This is the last, this is the final five. I'm only popping two more, okay? Two more and it's all Jover. Two more, last one, it's all Jover or we are so back. It's all Jover, guys. Well, no shiny the whole event. That's what's gonna happen, true and real. Okay, however, it is nighttime now, which means that we can at least change locations, locations and shake things up a little bit. So that's nice. Honestly, that's a positive. We'll take that. We, went, we did fossils long enough for it to switch day cycle in game. Why not, dude? It's pretty brutal that single encountering is so bad for this event. There is a Excel spreadsheet that my team made with some really good resources for like points per 10 hours. Now, I don't want to, you know, leak that to like give that out that information without their permission but i probably can say some things so like for example um it's rough how bad single encountering is for this event so the number one single encountering method that is on this spreadsheet is phoebus fishing and so this is the best the best um single encountering points per 10 hours in the game that i'm aware of from this list and that equals 0.97 points per 10 hours. So the best single encountering method is 0.97. It's less than one point per 10 hours on average. And then the best, the best horde method is 2.31 points per 10 hours. Like that's how different it is. Like hordes are almost like two times that two, oh, more than 200% better. It's like not even close. That's the one thing is like, it's the, the balancing around... Uh, you can go for a Secret Shiny, but the odds of it are so slim. And that extra 10 points, like, it's just tough. Secret Shinies are really tough. Um, single encountering is just not that good for this event, unfortunately. But it's kind of cool. I, I would love to see different balancing in future events to make one better than the other. Like, single encounter is being better next event versus this event was Hordes. Um, it's, it's really tough to score it legitimately equally for it to actually be even. I don't know if it's possible, honestly. Um, there's always going to be one spot or one method that is the best point for 10 hours, but generally shiny hunters are going to balance what's the most efficient with going for shinies they actually want because it helps motivate you, honestly, to, to hunt and grind more. Like, if I didn't actually want a Cacnea, it would be miserable hunting at this spot, you know? I just bought this Ditto for 4k. That is a decent snipe. I don't know if, like, to be fair, 25 plus in 5 stats out of 6. I don't know if, like, Ditto's like this really go for that much nowadays, but this is quite good. It's also naive nature. This ditto is actually kind of filthy. Um, it being naive is pretty damn nice. Bought for 4K, probably sell for 25K would be the quickest sale in the world. 
feel like it probably should go for more, but it's a really, really easy flip. Dude, we just bought so many ditto boxes. Look at this. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Boys. Nine, ten, eleven. So oh my god. We actually got too many, I think. I need to start trenching the alts. Apparently, there's more ditto boxes that this guy has that I can buy. But before I can buy those, I do have to transfer stuff to alts really quick. So if you don't mind, actually, I can buy one more, I guess, without transferring. But after this, I'm going to have to do some uh, transferring with account box. If you don't mind waiting, man. Thank you for all these ditto boxes. Happy sumo. Yeah, if there's one update that I misjudged drastically over the past year or so, it's probably account box. It is unbelievable how much more viable it has become to buy a ton of ditto boxes and store them on alt accounts and then switch them back and forth with the account box much smoother it's it's actually like changed the way ditto boxes work for a lot of people it's also made it a lot easier to do budget shunting um who was it someone made a video on this was it danny i think danny made a video on this someone made a video on this where basically um they like they only have 11 boxes for, for egg hunting, which is normally a big no-no, but like they'll do like 45 minutes of charm and they'll just trade their boxes over from alt accounts and it saves that you don't lose any, um, you don't lose any charm time when you just log out like that. So it's actually like a really good way for, for budget players to, uh, to shiny hunt at rare shinies. Pat, shut up, Mr. Shiny. Pat, stop yapping. <laughs> okay, who got a, who got it? Woomy Shiny. What's the Snivy? Wait, did he get a rare? <gasps> okay, I actually should stop yapping. That's actually huge. You're out of the forest. You're out of the forest. You're out of the dude, everybody's fucking blah, 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 blah. out of the forest. He's actually cured. Uh pod, 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 godly, pod, pod, pod. Dude, I have to see the wild catch. Is it a wild Snivy? That would be crazy. Shiny Snivy is amazing. I think one of the better starters, in my opinion. That's actually it's been a sec since we've seen a rare. That's so sick. Yo, who's up woomying their nation right now? Bro, Woomy Nation! Shiny Snivy. It was an egg. Egg shiny hatched. Look at look at him being all sassy with the crossed arms. I think Shiny Snivy in this superior line is one of the better starters, in my opinion. I'm not a huge starter guy. This is amazing. Dude, Woomy, this is awesome. This is a tier zero. A tier zero for Shiny Wars. Congratulations, man. Absolutely banger shiny. Probably took him thousands of hours, years of shunting. This is like it's so easy to just say that's awesome and move on in like a quick few seconds, but we really don't fully appreciate how much work and how much time and pokey and he put into this rare shiny like this are a really really big deal okay it took us a sec we got all the boxes prepared so boxes ninkata one six ninkata two seventeen twenty this naming scheme is unhinged i need a few more species here we can do that really quick um but this is looking pretty good i think we're looking set up here you can see box oop is nice and taken care of and set up we got a big badge. We can go breed over at Unova Fellas. We're also going to pop some Mysterious Balls today. I said I would, so we're gonna, we are going to pop some Mysterious Balls today as well. Move all eggs over here. I do still have around 50 eggs to hatch, so it technically still could be in the eggs hopium, uh, but obviously unlikely. Better chances that it's in this next batch that we're doing here on day four. This is the third batch. Well... I guess more so fourth batch if you count since the, the first batch was a thousand eggs pre-prepared for wars. Um, I think trying to stick to one batch a day would be a really, really good consistent thing to stick over for, for two months. But I, I'm pretty sure I'll fall off at that honestly at some point. A batch every other day I'd be very, very happy with to be honest. With all the times through hoarding and egg ticking in between, it's not a main priority to always perma do eggs. Okay, we were lucky enough to get blessed with a clip of Wumi hatching his snivy apparently it's just a team reaction to it and there's a there's a volume warning so be prepared loud warnings right now. also whoever recorded this is this louis is 143,000 encounters dry that's hilarious but horrible sorry what did he do? holy shit glad i gave the volume warning Whoever streamed, I love you so much. I want you to be my hype man for everything for the rest of time. I've never seen a, a man happier for his friend in my entire life. That is so sweet. That like that is this is the definition of homies fucking support. This is that's Luca. Dude, I love Luca. What the hell? That's amazing. What a clip. What a...
That's amazing. That's so fucking wholesome. All right, I'm fully ready to pop a charm and do eggs. However, I have one question for Twitch chat first. You guys can pick. Do you want me to do mysterious balls at the beginning of the charm or at the end? You can pick and make that decision. What would be more exciting? Okay, beginning, hard one out, okay? So I will be popping mysterious balls at the beginning. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get my charm ready. Uh, I guess, I'm just gonna go for it actually. You guys ready? Let's get a rare shiny, guys. Then I'm gonna pop a random amount of mysterious balls. Three, two, one, go. Good luck. So I've got four ultra balls. We're gonna be popping those, thank you very much. We're going to bind whatever. Frostlass, no shiny. Jinx, not shiny. Stantler. Great balls. We're going to pop a few of these. We'll pop four and move on. We're going to get them all down to even numbers. No shiny Sneasel. No Vanillite. We are 52,670 encounters dry, by the way. As we pop these, keep that in mind. A few Pokeballs. Nothing. Nothing. Do we do Cherish Balls or more Great Balls? I'm not doing the premieres. Cherish Balls or more Greats? What do you guys think? Say it fast, chat. What do you think? Cherish or Greats? Cherish? Everybody's saying Cherish. It's lower shiny rate in Cherish, but I think better species. Haxorus. No shiny, guys. I will do... Oh, should I do 10 more for you guys? Oh, I'm going to spoil you guys today. I'll do 10 more. I wouldn't normally do this. Two. Three. Don't open Mysterious Balls, by the way. Unless you're in Shiny Wars, I guess. It's not, it's not worth it. It's just a for fun thing. That wasn't shiny, right? To seal? If I got a seal out of these, that would be a little disappointing. Just, just a little. Okay, one more here. Boom. And that is how you waste millions of Poke Yen. Like, that was a lot of Poke Yen gone very quickly. Rest in peace, boys. Okay, also, fun fact I bought a. So look how many Pokeballs I bought. I was down to like 20 Pokeballs yesterday after stream. Now I have 4K. I was going to say, this guy linked me this. He was like, hey, sorry to bother you during stream. Just wanted to show the show this sick catch I got earlier. I don't normally flex people's catches like this, but this is quite the sick catch. <laughs> six times 31 wild alpha. Now, it's not as rare as a six times 31 normal Pokemon, but it's equally as rare as a four times 31 alpha or a four times 31 normal Pokemon. So the math on that would be, I think that's like a... One out of every, I think, 1,800? Or is it more? No, 4 times 31 is rarer, isn't it? This is like an extremely... It's, it's, it's very, very rare. This is very, six times thrown on a wild catch is crazy. That is very, very rare. Congratulations, dude. Um, that's It's not as rare as six times thrown on like, non-alpha. Because two of the 31s are guaranteed. But you're still randomly rolling four times 31. On an alpha. Beautiful catch, dude. That's That's nuts. Wait, something happened. Something big happened. Someone spit. People are spamming 17 months. Someone got an egg shiny that they've been working on for a really long time. What is it? I'm trying to scroll up. Something crazy. Some, it's, it's some, this has got to be some rare. Oh my god, there's so much chat. Barrels. 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 Dude. Barrel's got a shiny Karinidos! Dude! Barrel's! Oh my- Oh, and the IVs! Plus it's adamant? Dude! Barrel's! Barrel's, dude! Congratulations, man! Oh my god, Barrel's! The meme king! Today, he is not getting a meme shiny. He's getting a very serious shiny. Let me get out my Ramparos for good luck. Dude! Beautiful, beautiful, and I'm not just saying because I'm biased. Beautiful, amazing, incredible, S tier shiny. Nice fucking job, dude. How, how long, dude, what a hunt. Congratulations, man. That is so amazing. Congrats. I, I love Rampartus Prenados. That is, it's cool to have a match in shiny with you like that. 
that's a dream come true for me man that's amazing congratulations dude also on my charm i just realized oh he's on my charm when he got it that's actually wholesome that's actually fucking that's amazing that's oh my god i think i think it was he hatched from an egg so it wasn't actually you know but you know what i'm saying that's that's oh dude the rampardo's brothership dude that's i did not expect to see a, crani a shiny cranidos pop up today that's insane congrats dude all right and after a mediocre hour of eggs we are done i had fun though honestly it was really enjoyable to do a pretty casual hour of eggs my efficiency was not good but i just talked to chat had fun and enjoyed it that's what shiny wars is all about so you know what i'll take the efficiency loss for the for the better enjoyment and good conversations let me go ahead and group up my eggs to actually count how many i made Alrighty, i ended up with one two three four five six six wait one two three four five plus some more okay five plus 15 eggs here comes the windows calculator so we do five times 60 and then plus 15 really oh my god horribly bad eggs per hour but that's okay we had fun along the way so 315 eggs we would go ahead and add we did do some mysterious balls at the beginning which burns some time so uh the mysterious balls we did we did what 30 ish I can actually find that box. It was it was like 24-ish. Here. It was right there. 26. So 26 plus 315 plus 670. This is our new. So we're we are officially 53,000. 53,000 and 11 encounters dry. Hopefully it's just in the eggs, fellas. I've also been live for almost seven hours today. So this is where I'm going to go ahead and call it, guys. Just hatching and chilling. Thank you guys for an amazing day, an amazing stream. Another day of official Pokemon Shiny Wars done. we got two months of this, guys. we got a lot of grinding to do, a lot of chatting, a lot of talking, a lot of just discussing what's best, what to do, having fun. And thank you guys for making it so enjoyable every step along the way. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Dislike if not subscribe to the channel for daily pokemon videos i upload every single day i also stream as much as possible throughout shiny wars i might take a day or two off and throughout the week weekend we'll see discord's down below if you're interested in that and want pings for when i'm live on stream and then if you want to go above and beyond and support the content youtube memberships twitch primes and twitch subs do help out tremendously as well as paypal and venmo donations barrels i'm so excited for you again I, we were just talking about it we were just hyping it up barrels we can't believe it congrats on your shiny Cranidos. You guys are amazing. Have a great day. I'll see you guys later. Peace, Arino. Hey, thank you so very much for watching until the very end of the video. That means the world to me. And everyone on this list means even more to me for helping support the channel every single day. Thanks so much.